Life in the North Pole is centered around warfare and begins in the 14th century. Eric Stonestreet's character, the Mad Santa, Magnus Antas, is running from a coop and is perplexed as to how he could ever be removed from office. Furious with the elves' behavior, Santa declares that people will be afraid of Mad Santa for hundreds of years. Christmas has arrived in Chicago of today, and local Santa Chris is preparing for Santa's annual visit. Having successfully saved Christmas, Santa in the shape of Tim Allen's character Scott Calvin, his wife Carol, and their kids Cal and Sandra are soaring over the night sky. Carol doesn't want any action on their journey, but Scott can't stop himself as the kids mock their father while they soar into the skies, seeing what he can do with the sleigh. Cal passes out while spiraling into the night while the rest of the family enjoys the exhilaration of flying. As Scott descends the chimney at the Santapolis, he finds Chris dozing off and starts his Christmas delivery. Scott is enjoying yet another successful Christmas Eve delivery back at the North Pole. The notion of giving everyone enchanted snow globes that depict their favorite Christmas memories has contributed to the unparalleled level of Christmas enthusiasm. In an effort to save Christmas from being ruined, Carol volunteers to take over the elves. When Scott suggests that his son Cal take over as Santa, Cal is thrilled about the idea but finds it difficult to do most simple duties well, thus the elves don't support him. Sandra will be informed about her new position in the North Pole by Scott and Carol. Scott wants her to be in charge of all the animals in the North Pole, including the reindeer. When Cal blows out the candles on his birthday celebration, his love Riley appears, fulfilling his dream. Carol believes Cal isn't qualified for the position. Cal is ideal for the position, in Scott's opinion. The Cribble Crabble Clause forces Betty, the head elf, to take a vacation. She needs to go on a global tour for a year. All the animal sounds is overwhelming Sandra. Scott is all for Riley to return home. But she can't stop talking about the amazing snow globe presents Riley gave him. Carol tells Gary that she is taking over the elves. At their meeting, Betty tells Scott while he's getting a haircut that the Cribble Crabble Clause requires her to take a vacation. Scott wants Noel to take her place and urges her to depart. Although everyone gathers to bid Betty farewell, Betty is not very excited about the prospect. Prior to opening her vacation portal, Betty persuades Scott to guarantee that no significant alterations would take place while she is away. Cal's promotion to become the next Santa is announced by Scott as soon as the portal shuts. As Noel frets in his office about how he is failing Betty, Scott compares him to the mad Santa, Magnus Antas. Scott wants to know who this mysterious Santa is after overhearing the comparison. Magnus is shown mocking his elves in 1307 before they lock him up in a nutcracker. Noel finds out that the mad Santa nutcracker is gone in the present day. Noting that it would require magic from the North Pole to set Magnus free, Noel is unconcerned. Magnus Antas is released from prison after the snow globe present at the Santapolis fractures and spills North Pole magic, touching the lost nutcracker. Chris is astonished to see Santa, while Magnus is upset about being imprisoned. Magnus asserts that the Santa in the North Pole is a fake. Despite Chris' nice remarks and gratitude for the snow globe. Part 2, Floofy. As soon as Scott, Carol, and Cal arrive to the elves' meeting, he begins to go against the rules. Carol discusses taking over the elves and the unsolved Nutcracker case. Scott is curious as to why certain chapters in the Santa legend book are missing. As Magnus Antas is mentioned, the elves shrink back, and Cal gets his Santa training vest. Scott is cool with Riley remaining as long as it doesn't get in the way of their activities at the North Pole. Riley is there to support her boyfriend. When Cupid shows there, he says that a lot of other famous people are concerned that Cal will be the next Santa. When Scott asks about Magnus Antas, Cupid replies that he does not know the man, despite knowing his name. Cupid then offers to attempt to quiet down the other creatures. Magnus is growing used to his new surroundings. The power of a smartphone is what first astounds him. When Chris eventually gives Magnus a hug, he finds that Olga the gnome has been frozen on Magnus' back. Carol wants to know why the elves reacted in such an odd way to the missing objects. Sandra, in the meantime, is taken aback by her capacity to fire sparks from her palms and goes to the witch Labafana for guidance. Sandra is informed by Labafana that she may be a witch. Sandra expresses her irritation and explains how her pent-up emotions and aggravation have given rise to some unusual talents. On Christmas Eve, Cal starts a training session and fails terribly. Riley supports her boyfriend's failure, while Scott worries about Cal's achievement. Chris heads out of the museum to get some pickled goat legs for Magnus. Olga wishes they could reclaim what they lost, but Magnus seems content, liberated, and at ease. Perhaps the gnome follower's motto of churn and burn is no longer appropriate. Magnus, charmed by Chris, believes that humans may have changed. Olga says he is becoming softer. Olga smacks Magnus in the face for his poor decisions, even though she told him to let things go. While Carol is watching archived security camera footage in search of leads, Scott observes that Sandra has become more aloof. Sandra walks over to Carol and asks what she thinks about Lebafana. To further irritate her daughter, Carol informs her that Lebafana is crazy and a witch. Together with the witch, Sandra begins to hone her magical abilities. She has some success but also a lot of setbacks. Sandra acknowledges that she kept her newfound abilities a secret from her parents since they don't understand her. 
She should tell her parents the truth, according to La Bifana. Scott demands that they begin with Magnus Antas in order for Cal to learn about the previous Santas. This prompts Noel to discuss how he first got to know Betty in the 12th century, after Magnus' decision to relocate the Enterprise to the North Pole. As Noel recounts the historical account with bias, Magnus is distributing presents while strolling across the gardens of the Santapolis. When Scott finds out that Magnus was the first to keep outsiders from reaching the North Pole, he is impressed. Scott is unaware that Betty was imprisoned for a long time because Magnus stopped listening to the elves and picked gnomes as his counselors. Magnus is astounded to learn that individuals are unaware of their abilities after meeting a child. Magnus is upset after giving a child a present that gets thrown away. Scott makes an effort to reconcile with Sandra. A little reunion occurs between the father and daughter over ice cream, with the latter believing that the daughter is angry over Cal's selection as Santa. Sandra tells Scott that she believes she is turning into a witch as she calls for a spoon from across the room. Scott is really understanding of his daughter's newfound skills. As Carol enters, she informs Scott that Magnus Antas, the subject of the missing pages, was transformed into a nutcracker. Magnus is furious with individuals for their lack of gratitude. Magnus declares that the world will suffer for their ungratefulness and that they will retake the North Pole. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to channel subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of Media Breakdown.